am Erin Grewell, and I am sitting at the Freedom Riders headquarters with three of the original Freedom Riders. And I welcome you today as we talk about our next project with original Freedom Rider Sue Ellen Alpazar. Say hello, Sue Ellen. Freedom Rider extraordinaire Narada Coleman. Say hello, Narada. Hello, hello, hello. And the ever so lovely Brenda Zambrana. Say hello, hello to your sweet babies at home who are watching this. For all of you, wherever you may be, um, whether it's in the United States or abroad, we want to spend the next hour with you sharing our latest project. Um, we're going to go backwards to room 203 to remember our first project. And then we're going to fast forward to today. In 30 days, we have a new book coming out. And what this new book represents is the next generation, the next generation of, of teens today who during troubling times and a global pandemic fall in the footsteps of these incredible freedom writers and were able to write what needed to be written to tell what needs to be told and to start a revolution. So I wanna start um, with Sue Ellen. As a student in room 203 with a crazy teacher wearing polka dots and pearls. Today I just got the pearls, no polka dots. Uh, I gave you this daunting task of writing and you're dyslexic and you hated reading and writing and suddenly you're going to bear your soul so that others can bear witness. What was that opportunity like when I said, oh, we're going to write in these journals and maybe just maybe we'll write a book? It For me, it was a mixture of nervousness because I was terrified of my writing. Um, because of my dyslexia, I could not spell. And so I have a hard time spelling out words. So I would sit with the dictionary without for hours and, and try to like come up with a word or ask someone. Um, and it, I was just nervous about it. But then on the other hand, I was a little bit excited because personally for my story, when I wrote in the Dear Diary was about paying homage to my brother that passed away. And so I knew what I had to write about, but I was just very nervous if I could actually even pull it off. This is how old we are, folks. I know we don't look that old <laughs> in the world. I was I actually have to laugh because Sue Ellen and I did an event uh, a week ago Friday, and this little fourth grader came up, and she had a scowl on her face. I, I don't think she had bathed for probably seven days, so I was a little afraid that there might be little, little creepy crawlies that might have gone from her to me because we did a very deep hug. She could not understand why I looked a lot older than that woman in the movie. In her, her nine-year-old brain, she could not comprehend how old I was compared to Little Miss Swanky Pants, Hillary Swank. Um, but the beautiful thing is about this incredible process. When Freedom Writers sat down to write, initially it was a journal, and they did not have the technology at home. They did not have computers on their smartphones because there was no such thing as a smartphone. There was no computers in their homes. And so the liberating part of, of someone who has a learning disability like Sue Ellen, being exposed to something called a spell check. What was that like when you, when you always spelled the words wrong and then suddenly there was a squiggly red line? <laughs> That was actually pretty liberating because it, it helped me not rely on people so much. Um, it gave me a sense of independence, but even then, spell check wasn't hundred percent perfect. So I would have to kind of Google a word or ask someone if it was a complicated word and I was completely off, but it definitely settled my nerves and, and liberated that feeling of like being able to tell my story finally without, without anything holding me back. So what's amazing about these kids today, the next generation, is this book was written entirely through technology from their homes and screens and what we aptly called Zoom 203. And these amazing freedom writers held their hand the entire way. They gave them virtual hugs and could go back to their memories of how scary it was, whether they had a learning disability or not. So throughout the hour, as, as we share stories, and we're gonna share a lot of stories, I'm gonna be calling on you, those of you that are watching, we need to bring 50 student authors 
to Long Beach, California, a month from today on March 26th. We are bringing authors from Rwanda, from Israel, from all over the US and countries near and far. These are arduous times. Um, there are attacks in Ukraine, there's inflation. So these kids, like the Freedom Riders, don't have the economic wherewithal to buy a plane ticket, to stay in a hotel, but they are authors. And when our book comes out officially to the world on March 29th, we want those kids with pen in hand to start signing books. So if you are inspired to help us get those 50 kids, I'm gonna read your names in real time. So some folks have already beat me to the punch. I wanna give a shout out to Michelle Holiday. Thank you, Michelle Holiday, for donating $51 to help us get some sweet kids for wherever they may, may be on the globe to come to Long Beach, California. Slade, oh my God, Slade, I haven't seen you in forever. So Slade, I'm gonna be excited when I see names that I are, are friends who are scattered around the globe. My friend Slade donated $100. That's oh. gonna get some sweet kid that much closer to Long Beach, California. And Tara, ah, oh, Tara Chesler, who is a Freedom Writer teacher, along with Michelle Holiday, she donated a hundred bucks. So, in just uh, six minutes or less, those of you that are watching, if you were inspired, five bucks, don't go to Starbucks today and donate five bucks. Uh, don't go to Starbucks, Starbucks tomorrow, donate ten bucks. We got to get fifty kids from around the globe who have dedicated their time and their talent to telling the world what it needs to be told. I want to go to you, Narada. There was a line. There was a, a moment in my class, and I asked you guys to, to reveal your truth. You did so brilliantly a few days ago uh, with a freedom writer teacher right here in California. And there was a moment. Uh, I asked a question then that I asked of you, and someone stood beside you. And that someone got the nickname of Wonder Woman. Because in that moment of fear, just a couple days ago, she was revealing a truth that you not only revealed on a line, you wrote about in, in Diary 24 in the Freedom Writer's Diary, and then your very words became part of the motion picture. So let's go back to a line, let's go back to a class this week, and let's go back to that young girl who was Wonder Woman. You know, when I stepped up to the line to tell my truth, uh, how Diary 24 came about, it had took a lot. It took a lot of courage. It took a lot of of self um, self doubt to fall off. Because when you go through something and you think you're the only one that's going through it, you know, it weighs down on you. So to have that line and to step on it and to say my truth and to see that I had support that I wasn't the only one going through it, it was it was liberating because it turned into, okay, I have support, but now I have to support others. So fast forward all these years later, we're doing an event and we're having the same line game. And this girl who I had been, I don't know why we were playing the game. I was just like having small conversations with her. I didn't know why, I just felt like picking on her. She was on her phone telling her to kind of stop, you know, tune in to what we were doing. So then that question comes up again. And of course, I step to the line now all these years later, I'm, I'm comfortable in my skin. I can say that is my truth because now it's support mode. So here this girl steps to this line for the same thing about being homeless. And it's like, oh, my God. And I talked to her afterwards. This was her first time stepping to the line, revealing to everybody that she had been homeless. And it was a recent thing. So everything is still fresh. The emotions are still raw. She's in tears. She's crying. You know, she's probably feeling she doesn't want any sympathy for it. You know, she's had to put on this tough, this tough uh, um, exterior, you know, but on the interior, she's probably just breaking down. And, you know, to have those moments now to where our stories from what we wrote all these years later are still affecting this generation now and to be there for them. It's the, it's it's great. We we endure our pain and put it on to paper into a book, a movie, a documentary, and to see the fruits of the labor like that. To now know that she has support, that she wasn't alone, that 
if she was feeling depressed about anything, she doesn't have to feel depressed about it anymore because now she sees that she has support. It's an amazing thing. You know, what's amazing about that moment is all the young students had written their name, like a nickname uh, on a sheet of paper with bright colored pens. And Narada is an artist. And he snuck to the side as other freedom artists were sharing their story and, and did this beautiful Wonder Woman symbol. Uh, it was glorious and was able to give it to her. And I envisioned her carrying it around with her in her backpack for the duration of her high school career. So imagine, I've got 50 kids and freedom writers all over the world, and we're trying to connect with them in the way that we try to connect with people in person. So we try to recreate the line game with students in Israel and Rwanda and New Zealand. And you know how we did it? We took off our shoe. So imagine a box, a screen, <laughs> and I ask questions, and we just lifted up our shoe, um, a shoe, a sandal, a slipper, a sock. I know it sounds a little bit corny, but the tactile nature of, of, of having that physicality of, of, of looking at all of these boxes, looking at all of these kids. So we're going to be able to do the line game with them in person in Long Beach between March 26th and March 29th. And as we're standing in silence, we're going to be standing in solidarity. So Narada, before we move on to the next question, what is that going to be like to see these students in person, these student authors that we've been seeing on screens, standing here in Long Beach, doing the line game beside you, um, next to you, for you, by you, and with you? It's going to be magical. It's going to be magical. It's like the culmination of everything that we've been working on with this book and with these kids and spending time. We, you know, we've had some chances to see them in person, but there's others we haven't. We've been seeing everybody through Zoom and everything. So to be there in person on the line, it's almost like a passing of the torch type thing. This is, you know, I won't call us the old generation. We're older, not old, but um, it'll be us and the new, the new generation. It's like this whole process, the book, doing the line game with them, it's just passing the baton. And it's the same things that were done for us with um, Meet Geese, with Zlata, Zlata Filipovich, with their, with their stories and stuff and meeting them. That, they passed the baton to us so that we can go on and write this book. So 20-something um, years later, here we are doing the same thing. So it'll be more than an honor just to have them there and be there with them and share with them in their moments and, and to see them face to face and like, hey, you guys got it now and let's see you run your race now. So let's get these kids here. Um, Freedom Arts called me Miss G, which I thought was a little irreverent. But if you were an OG from the LBC, it's a, a sign of respect, uh, kind of an original gangsta with an A. <laughs> uh, we have an OG who just donated, and that is the Silver Fox himself, Bill Fever. And Bill, the fact that you donated, this is so ironic because Bill was the very first Freedom Rider teacher that we selected in 2005, and I, I wanna do a little shout out for Bill Fever, who is also not only a Freedom Rider teacher, but a sponsor of an amazing young man named Richard, who is telling a story about what it's like to be incarcerated as a kid. This is the 20th anniversary of our book, but when the book was first published, literally in like 1999, uh, we didn't have the 10th anniversary or the 20th anniversary, which I'm gonna talk about with Brenda in a moment. We just had our stories from freshman year through senior year. I fly up to do an event in Fresno and I see this man, the silver fox of all silver foxes, and he's got our book and there's like stickies in it and it's dog-eared and there's like things that are underlined. And I'm looking at his book the way I would have done to a book that I taught. Turns out that Bill Fever taught with incarcerated youth, um, and he was a father figure to them. And our book, The Freedom Writer's Diary, was the book, the book for solitary confinement, the book for a kid who needed a light in a dark place. So when I saw our book was dog-eared and stickies and underlined, I just knew that he had to be a part of this Freedom Writer movement. The fact that he was able to pass that baton to a young man who was incarcerated, 
a, a young man who writes about being in foster care, a young man who's now an author of Dear Freedom Writer is so amazing. So the fact that Bill is donating to this cause when he himself is gonna be here in March with his colleagues, Michelle and Greg, and this amazing author, it's, it's pretty amazing. So thank you for donating and, and thank you for, oh, here they come, this is kind of exciting. Uh, an anonymous donation just came in because people want Freedom Rider kids to come to Long Beach between March 26th and March 29th. Um, just donated $50. So whoever you are out there, wherever you are, thank you for donating $50 uh, to bring some sweet kids to Long Beach. So the book that Bill Fever had in his hands all those years ago, didn't look like this because this is the 20th anniversary edition and the 20th anniversary edition came out literally before we knew what coronavirus was before we were all sheltering in place before folks like Brenda actually sadly caught COVID um, and had to be hospitalized mm -hmm. in 2019 we were on top of the world uh, it was the 20th anniversary of our book and what made it so celebratory and exciting was a story that Brenda wasn't ready to tell in room 203. There was a time to tell it now. And the anonymity of this book is sacred. The anonymity of this book and the anonymity of Dear Freedom Writer is something really important because when people write and they're not ready to share their name, um, they're still sharing a story. So without sharing Brenda's story, I wanna talk to you about what it was like for you to have the power 20 years later to anonymously write. And then we're gonna talk about a young girl on the other side of this country who wrote to you. So what was that like to, I'm gonna get emotional because we were in this very room uh, when Brenda wrote that story for the 20th anniversary and it was terrifying and it was liberating. So take us back about what it was like to, to share your truth for the 20th anniversary. Um, simply put, it was um, heal liberating. It was uh, a moment of healing. Um, you know, it took me 20 plus years to be able to finally tell my story. And it was my, my brothers and sisters like Narada and Ty who was in here and Erica who was in here and Sue and Norma, um, my fellow freedom writer, sister, friend. Um, it was people like them who finally um, allowed me to open up, who gave me that push I needed, who gave me that green light that I so needed. Um, you know, when I was writing my story, there was many times when I, I had to stop writing because I just felt like a coward. Um, and, you know, three years ago, I'm a 39 year old woman and I felt like a coward um, and here I am now um, helping you know a 14 15 16 year old young student author writing her story or his story and I'm thinking oh my god how courageous is that I couldn't do it mm. I couldn't do it you know and the bravery that they have and um, these stories are, you know, beautiful. Some of them are so tragic. They're, they're real. They're raw. Um, they needed to be told. And I, I've read somewhere a quote that said, be that someone you needed when you were young or be that someone you needed when you were a child. And I felt like we are that, like I could now be that to someone and, you know, holding Z's hand, I hope it's okay, I mentioned her name, through the story and, oh my gosh, how many tears were shed during that writing process, you know, and I just, I, I couldn't believe how brave and courageous she really was because I couldn't do it, mm -hmm. you know, and I felt like, I was a Miss G to her, you know, like you were to us. I, Narada, Sue, we've been Miss G's to these young authors. Oh, I want to say for those of us that got to experience Brenda's transformation, uh, she's anything but a coward. She's so courageous. Uh, she was so transparent. 
but in this very room, this was the, the epicenter. You just saw our puppy stand. Who, who wants a little bit of the action? Um, that's the beauty of a live Freedom Forum is in this chaotic space, it is organized chaos. In this very room at our Freedom Riders headquarters, we were all strategically placed. As Brenda finally thought, I'm going to face my fear. I'm going to tell my truth. And I'm going to share my story. And I have to say, I don't know if you remember, Brenda, it was Sue Wellen who was a tomboy back in the day, but she became like a girly cheerleader. She was squealing when, when Brenda had not only written her story, but had chosen to like read it out loud to us. Um, so what was that like for your girl to have, have pinned this story, to put it out in the world and for you to become that like girly cheerleader cheerleading for your sister? Uh, for me, it was just this amazing experience of, of I know how it feels when you have something so heavy, so deep inside of you that you cannot let it go. And you keep that hidden and you don't share it and you don't process it. I know how that feels. And for me, it was liberating. And so I knew that that weight of relief that Brenda was experiencing. I knew how it felt. I understood it. And I was so excited when she felt it and, and was able to, to share her truth. And there was no judgment there. There was just nothing but love. And the fact that we're able to do this with now another generation, it's just like a, such a huge honor. It's beautiful. Uh, you guys are going cuckoo bananas in the chat room and on our Give Lively. And oh my gosh, I'm gonna, I, I want to say everyone's name. If you donate, I'm going to say your name. I'm not even say a story. Nare. Uh, Nare is one of us. Nare is a Freedom Writer teacher. She got to respond to a glorious story uh, about her homeland uh, to celebrate being Armenian with a young writer, uh, a young author, a student author and dear freedom writer who wrote about escaping uh, Russia and, and eventually coming to America. That story is more timely and topical today because what is happening right now in the Ukraine, Nare just donated $255. That's, that's crazy thank you, thank you. and spectacular. Thank you. And we're gonna get more students to Long Beach, California because of donations like that. Nancy Rodriguez. Nancy just donated a hundred and two dollars. Oh my God. This makes me want to cry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is bonkers. A student author that goes to Glendale Community College um, exquisitely has become an advocator. Uh, that's what she calls herself, an advocator and an advocate for those that are visually impaired. Um, my girl, Jasmine. Um, wrote her story. We raised money to buy her the most amazing Apple computer on the planet. Jasmine started a GoFundMe to come to Long Beach um, and she wants to do it independently. Mom and dad are just going to drop her off and pick her up mm -hmm. because she wants to be here with her new brothers and sisters. Jasmine, Jasmine just donated a hundred dollars wow. for wow. student authors. That's, that's crazy and beautiful and amazing. On, Makes me want to weep. Okay. Um, Stephen Myers, Stephen Myers, uh, Stephen Myers just donated a hundred and two dollars. Thank you so much. This is, this is like monopoly money. This is so much fun. Um, my colleague who is working the computer and the camera making this go live right now, Robert Falk just donated $25. That's five Starbucks visits that he is not going to do to help these beautiful kids come. <laughs> Our incredible you, principal who sponsored a student author who should be with us in March. And I'm holding out hope that he still can come, even if it's for a day. St. Clair. St. Clair, if you are a podcast aficionado, St. Clair was on one of our, our first episodes of our podcast talking about apartheid in South Africa in his childhood youth of being excluded and marginalized. I think he, you can correct me in the chat, I think he's up to his eighth degree. So imagine not being able to go to school and then you just keep going to school. Um, and he's one of the most learned and scholarly people I know. And he chose one of the beautiful students in his school in Queens, New York, to be a student author. He just donated $102. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
Oh my goodness, this is cuckoo crazy. Deborah is sponsoring two students, uh, both Nevea and um, Darlene. She has her own, own GoFundMe account. She should not be donating because we need to donate to her GoFundMe because she's trying to get herself, her colleague Roma, and these two beautiful kids who have written about some of the most excruciatingly painful things, the foster care system. Uh, another young author that she is supporting wrote about losing four friends to suicide before she was the age of 12. Mm. That kind of loss is incomprehensible. Uh, the name of that story is Burying My Friends. Deborah's trying to get those kids, and yet Deborah just donated $25 to the cause. That's crazy. That should be going to you, Deborah, but, but we'll turn around and donate it right back to you. Um, Wyatt. Thomas the fourth. Wow. Um, a hundred and two dollars. Remember we have 50 kids. We're trying to get here from every corner and city and continent and country. And we don't want any kid to be too proud to ask. We don't want any parent to be ashamed. We made a rule back in the day. Like if we're going to go to Washington, it, it, it's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. So help us help these kids. Help us help these parents, help these kids have this glorious moment with the helps of people like Wyatt Thomas IV, um, sending some money to the cause. So, so thank you. So in this mentality of all or nothing, Brenda, um, on a screen, your beautiful uh, letter came from a little girl in Springfield, Massachusetts, who wept a guttural wail like you did in, in this very room when you wrote the 20th anniversary story. Uh, the tears that you shed could hydrate uh, the ocean that is outside our window. And yet you were like sisters, you were like daughter and mother. And so I wanna, I wanna ask you what it's like because we're gonna try to get this beautiful girl from Springfield, Massachusetts to, to Long Beach, California with the support of her teacher, um, Aretha Sanders. What was that like to, to read the letter to respond to that letter and then be face to face with her on the computer and read it together. It was one of the most exquisite moments of my life, but what was it like for you? Because it was just about a year prior that you had written your 20th anniversary and, and suddenly you're with someone who's a teenager who did what you did as an adult. I felt like that was meant to be. I felt like there was a reason it took me so long to write and tell my story. There was a reason I'm part of this project. It was meant to be. I needed her as much as she needed me in that moment. Mm. And um, I uh, I felt like even though she was on the other side of a, a computer screen, I felt like she was in the room with me. I felt like she was holding my hand. I felt like I was holding her hand. And, you know, she was squeezing it and I was squeezing it. I was giving her that okay, that Narada, Sue, Norma, Ty, Erica gave me. Um, these are hard stories to write. They're really hard. They're, they're, again, stories that some people are not ready to write about and may not be ever ready to write in their lifetime. And yet here she was writing this beautiful, tragic, tragically beautiful story. Um, and I was just so proud of her. And, you know, I have a daughter. And, you know, Violet, her name is Violet, she was right there with me and she was bringing me, uh, you know, tissue and she was asking questions and what's going on, what's happening. And for me to be able to to share this with Violet and, and you know, my son as well, but with Violet, she's my little girl and I want her to have a voice like Z. I feel like these young authors now have a voice because of us, because of you, because of their parents and their teachers and their counselors. And to be able to give them that, that's what we needed when we were in room 203. So for those of you at home that are just learning about our Dear Freedom Writer Project, this, this glorious new book that's going to come out March 29th globally, is we didn't have room 203. You know, we were in the middle of a pandemic. We were all trapped at home. Both the folks beside me had spent time in a hospital um, due to coronavirus. Um, both of them were this shy of, of not being here, being on this planet because of this, this horrific tragedy. Um, and we were doing vigils. And I had an entire prayer squad in Pittsburgh 
um, where he is from, his hometown, um, praying for Narada. We we did Toast for Change while she was in the hospital bed, um, quite early in the, the COVID crisis for, for Brenda. So it really, it struck home. Sue Wellen had COVID and had been living and working with me. And we, you know, we we're as close as can be. We were trying to figure out how, how do we create that invisible bubble to hermetically seal me fr from not catching it. So COVID was real. In the midst of COVID, uh, Frieda Myers missed each other. And so we started zooming it up and it was kind of weird. And then it was kind of fun. And then they kind of lasted forever, you know, and, and an hour Zoom start at six o'clock at night would go to like 1.30 in the morning. Enough for, I'm old, I, I got off, but I would I would empower somebody else and the girls would giggle and they would go till 1.30 in the morning. The president of Waldorf University said, you guys are meeting, you're talking, you're changing the world. Do you think Freedom Mars would, would want to go back to school? You know, for those that want to get their bachelor's degree, for those that want to get a master's degree. And so we thought, well, we're already zooming it up. We're, we're already creating curriculum for kids at home. Why not? So Dear Freedom Writer sprung from this class. And I, I want to share some sweet anecdotes about that class, because if we didn't have that class, I don't know if we would have had the connection to write the book. Brenda came over. She got a brand new computer. Her sweet son, who's in middle school, helped her set up her new computer. Oh, my gosh. Breaking news. <laughs> I recognize this name. It happens to be a freedom writer who was married to another freedom writer. I love that we've got an original freedom writer couple who have original freedom writer babies that are like 100% freedom writer. But the sweet Maddie at home who was celebrating her brothers and sisters and her husband just donated $25.87 to the cause. She's going to be there. She's coming to the Hotel Myatt. She's a freedom writer. She's got a story in this new book. Oh, Monty, sweet Mon Monty. Monty should be at our freedom writer retreat, March 26th to the 29th. She's a freedom writer teacher that we love dearly in Moreno Valley. If you change your mind, Monty, even if it's just for one day, even if it's just for the book release, please, please come. Monty just donated $200. Her superintendent, Dr. Martin Rex Ketziora, is sending 33 educators and six authors. I want to say that out loud. A superintendent and a school board is sending 33 teachers and six authors um, who get to see a different side of education because it's hard to be an educator during a pandemic. It's hard to have substitutes. Um, our superintendent was actually a substitute in, in many of those classes. And he said, let's celebrate. You know, we're tired of it. If it bleeds, it leads. Let's have some good news. Let's have some good vibes out in the world. So the fact that Michelle is part of the Moreno Valley School System and is not coming, but she's gonna come. Even if it's just today, Michelle, um, donating, that's amazing. Well, they just keep coming. Someone, someone who's anonymous. I feel like we're in church. I feel like there's like an offering. Um, this is kind of fun. It's like a rush. Um, give me that rush. I got, I got 27 more minutes to talk at you, but I will stop talking if I keep getting donations. A hundred and two dollars and fifty six cents, to be exact, from an anonymous donor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Every single penny that goes into this GoFundMe is going to go right back to these fifty authors. We want every single one of them to come, every single one of their teachers to come. So I go back, we're in this Zoom, we're at school. And what I loved about as we're trying to talk about this concept of this new book, and I wish I could, I think I could, like that train. What I love to see on the screen, because those, those classes would start at six and they might go to nine, 10, one o'clock in the morning. Her children, were so proud of their mom going back to school that every single class, little Violet would bring mom a bag of chips. Uh, she wanted mom to have some nutrients. Uh, little Violet would bring her a sandwich. Little Violet might bring her a salad. And then she'd peek her little head in the screen and we would just make a big deal about her mom going back to finish a degree. 
and, and, and write a book simultaneously. So as you are going back to school and your daughter is bringing you all these delicious treats, what was that like to be a mom going back to school and an author for your little Violet to watch and peek her head into her screen? But it makes me want to cry yes. because it was so beautiful. It was it was so sweet. And um, tell them how old she is, little Violet. She's only nine. She's only nine. She's only nine. Um, does she make good sandwiches? She, she does. <laughs> she's, she's very self-aware. She's a very self-aware nine-year-old. Um, I don't worry too much about her, to be honest, but. You know, in all seriousness, it was the fact that she was so proud of me. Um, because growing up, I wanted my mom to be proud of me. And I don't, I, I never got that. You know, my mom's not with us anymore. And I don't know really if I ever made her proud. I want to think I did. But um, to get that from my daughter, it just means... 10 times, you know, it's, it's 10 times bigger than, 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 than anything else. And, you know, I, I make her proud and that's all that matters. And the fact that she's watching and she's um, talking about me with her teachers and, you know, taking the Freedom Writer book to school with her and showing the school principal and show, she's just so proud. Just a, a quick, funny story. Um, the Freedom Writer beanies that we all got. So Violet is a very girly girl and she's got, you know, a, a little collection of very girly girl beanies with the little flowers and, you know, pink and rainbows and unicorns. Those are now in the back of the drawer <laughs> and the Freedom Rider beanie is now her favorite. So she will reach for that beanie over any other beanie in her drawer because she's just so proud. She's so proud of the foundation. She's so proud of the book. She's so proud of, of, of her mom, you know, and, and that just to me is everything. You know, I, I did plan this in our itinerary, uh, but if we get enough money to bring 50 kids to Long Beach, uh, I want to raise money to get them beanies um, because <laughs> we, we don't really have a lot of swag and every once in a while we'll bust out, we'll get like a beanie, we'll get like a jet and Freedom Riders wear it all the time. I don't really have the head for a beanie. Sue kills it <laughs> with the beanie, um, but I want to get all 50 of these kids a beanie the way Violet wears her beanie, a Freedom Rider beanie. Um, more money is coming in. Our amazing colleague, Brian Solis, just donated $25.87. Uh, the way I calculate that, that's a beanie. That is a beanie. <laughs> <laughs> Someone gets a beanie. Oh, no, Ray, your amazing sister who helped us celebrate and treasure. And on my wall is a glorious photo um, celebrating their homeland of Armenia. Ani, thank you so much. A hundred dollars was just donated. So proud that there is a story in Dear Freedom Rider that pays homage to your family, to your heritage, to your country. And we here in Freedom Rider World, we stand up to bullies. So that story was really about standing up to bullies. Oh my goodness. Another colleague, Rick, just donated $25. Guess what, Rick? That's a beanie. That's a beanie. <laughs> so I got my own team donating money for beanies and for hotel rooms and for airline tickets to get these kids from every corner and every continent. So we're on a screen. We're strategizing about this book. And we quite honestly don't know what every kid's going to write. We just want them to write. And... 50 brilliant teachers around the country who have the moniker of being a freedom writer. Look how subtle everyone's passing me these cards. I'm going to stop. Oh, no, she did not. Did. Just talked about bullies. My sweet Kelly. Kelly's a student author. Kelly is coming to the Freedom Writers um, Retreat in March. Kelly just donated $104.60. And when I was your age, Kelly, I didn't even have a hundred bucks. Yeah, I used true. to mow lawns. I used to babysit and I used to clean houses. I'm a really good like toilet scrubber. <laughs> um, I would have not even had a hundred bucks. How many toilets would I have had to clean for a hundred bucks? The fact that you were donating for other student authors who, who may not have that wherewithal is, um, it's pretty darn amazing. And I want to do a shout out to Kelly, that student author she wrote about, 
the power of bullying, um, sadly online, you know, for, for some kids, it doesn't just stay online. It, it is viral and then it's face to face. And so Kelly allowed us to have a really existential response to what it's like when, when bullies don't just stay online um, because we have been nurturing a school, Landmark Middle School, who, who lost a student, a 13 year old boy named Diego, who was bullied and, and lost his life at school. So, so Kelly really went there. Um, it's so topical, it's so timely. Oh, thank you, Kelly, for, for helping support our, our fellow Freedom Writers. Mm-hmm. This is amazing. Uh, Adriana Flores, soon to be finishing uh, her master's from the program that we created and started from Waldorf University. She's a semester away, a term away by this time, three months, she'll be done. Wow. But by May, Adriana, who is a teacher, her student is Kelly. That's kind of cool. I don't know if that's like simultaneous or that's just the way the universe yeah. works. Um, Adriana has an amazing story in this book uh, about the American dream responding to a beautiful young boy whose family came from Nepal. Adriana just donated $203. That's a lot of beanies. That's actually like a flight. That might be a flight for someone, um, depending on where they're coming from. Oh my God, oh my God. Yesenia, Yesenia is the wrangler of all things Freedom Writer teachers and all things student authors. Yesenia, she rocks a beanie and she's gonna be able to pay a beanie forward to someone else. no one looks as good in a beanie as my girl Yesenia. So we're gonna we're gonna pay it forward with a beanie for one of these great kids. This is so much fun. Um, Renee, I just saw Renee an hour ago in our Zoom, and we were celebrating these kids. And for a lot of our teachers who work with the elementary school age kids, there will be a dear freedom writer for the elementary school age at some point because you know a kid is a kid and pain is pain. She happens to hail from the district that her superintendent is sending her here, Marino Valley. So too much is given, much is paid forward. Renee Bender just donated $207.87 to the cause. Um, Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, thank you. I wanna go back. Um, These letters start coming from kids, from all of these teachers and you guys, we gather in our Zooms and we start reading them. And they are uncensored, unvarnished. They ripped our heart open. And you guys kind of got to select, this is my response. This is, this is the story that I need to write back to. So Dear Freedom Writer is a letter written by 50 young people who were trying to raise enough funds to come to California in a month. And freedom writers and freedom writer teachers saying, I got this, you know, I'm I'm ready to step up as someone who made it to the other side. The pain is still visceral, it's still raw, but I want someone to know it gets better. So I'd like one of you to volunteer. What was it like to say, I'm, I'm ready to step up for this kid. I'm ready to be that big brother, that big brother, that big sister, and let them know I too was where they were. But take my hand and I'm gently gonna walk you to the other side. Who who wants to go first? Oh, this is what they do in class. If I don't look at them, they pretend that they don't see me. I'm giving you guys an out. Rock, paper, scissors. One, two, three, not it. (laughs) So let's make soup. Let's make soup. Okay. That's uh-huh. why I get for being quiet. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, he and I, he and I from his Jeep. So um, in particular, my response um, was very touching because um, the theme was something that is very, that I'm still struggling with today. And it is mental illness and being a constant um, patient and having to take care of yourself. So deeply and, and, and take care of yourself in a way that I haven't, I wasn't raised that way. And so um, I knew the this str- this student's struggle of being frustrated of the mental health system and feeling this fear of going back and being institutionalized because at one point I was institutionalized and I was um, there for a deep depression and I was 
I had suicidal ideations. And um, that's where I learned that I had to do some incredible big life changes. One was leave my mom and two was take care of my health, my, uh, my, what I eat, how I sleep, how long I sleep, um, take all these medications. And I know that feeling of being in this cycle over and over again, and still having that fear of one day I might go into the mental hospital. One day I might go and, and seek treatment again and not knowing when the shoe is going to basically drop. And so it was powerful for me to respond because it made me also reflect on me as well and what I was going through. But um, what I felt so wonderful was I was able to let her know that she was not alone, that this process, she had her mother, she had an incredible support network. And um, it was something that was made me feel like this was incredible and I could I could be able to use my experience and give something back. And me and her are still very much connected and we talk and we check in on one another. We actually did an event yesterday and it was amazing. And I got to see her speak. Um, but I'm just so proud I could take something and take my pain and make it and give it purpose. Mm. I, I hope that she's watching. You know, these these young people have the cloak of anonymity. And so we got to see them every time we met um, in a Zoom. And when when Sue was able to connect with her yesterday, she was able to do so. This this young woman is 3,000 miles away, is now an honor student at a, a beautiful college. And because of this book, because of her being courageous, we invited college students to join us to talk about this new book. And it was a record showing, it was supposed to be 90 minutes, it lasted three hours. And in that three hours, there was not a, a moment where someone wasn't weeping or celebrating or putting heart emojis in um, the chat room it was exquisite. So what, what you can see is when the Freedom Writers and the Freedom Writer teachers committed to respond. It wasn't just one and done. Don't just send us a letter and go about your business. It's like you're part of our family. We want the healing process to happen. We want to destigmatize these these words that are often ugly and 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 carry great stereotypes. Um, I hate the fact that Sue even used the word institutionalized. Um, in this very room many many years ago, Sue went to a really dark place and had threatened me that she was going to go home and harm herself. And as a teacher, I, I take being a mandated reporter really seriously. She was already an adult. She had already gone to college and she was employed here. Um, but I pulled my teacher card and I said, you, you have a choice. You either get in my car and I'm going to drive you to the hospital or I'm going to call an ambulance and they're going to take you kicking and screaming. So, so she lovingly went, and that was a really scary thing for me because I didn't know if she would forgive me. I didn't know in the state of California, we have something called a 5150. Um, some of you that don't live in California may have, have witnessed that, that happened to, to Kanye um, when they diagnosed him with his mental illness of being bipolar. Um, it happened to Britney Spears. They did a 5150 on her. So as an educator, we as educators, we, we want to help our kids and they will always be my kids, be safe and whole. So the fact that Sue Ellen got to find her people to respond to someone who is a lot more sophisticated and savvy with this mental health journey, uh, it was really beautiful to see the two of you corresponding yesterday and, 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 and being so bold and, and so brave. Um, it was amazing. So I'm excited that this young girl is being sponsored by her university to come, to come to California and to meet you face to face, not just on a screen, not just virtual hugs, not direct messages, but like a big, warm hug, like a big, warm hug. Uh, I want to do another shout out to another one of our Moreno Valley teachers who is coming, who was on every single Zoom, every single meeting. Rochelle Wright, and I, 
showed the card to Brenda and she winked at me and she said, oh, I just love her. We all love her. She is Little Miss Sunshine. And when COVID first hit, she and her family made the most amazing face masks um, that were exquisite. I, I got to keep the polka dots. Um, some of you got the Dodger blue, but Rich, uh, Rochelle made um, dozens and dozens of, of face masks for Freedom Riders, Freedom Rider teachers, and she just donated $255.93. Thank you. Um, unbelievable. We, we love you so much. Without telling your storyteller's story, what you're going to, oh, Nacha, our scientist friend, Nacha, thank you, thank you, thank you. Even Sweetie Pies, uh, my Sweetie Pies are donating money. So I love that Nacha just gave us $50 um, supporting her Sweetie Pie to get those beautiful kids um, to come to California. Um, we're going to talk about racism being real. And, you know, some of our Sweetie Pies, Sweetie Pies have faced racism in real time. And so this book deals with the reckoning of a knee and a neck with George Floyd. Dear Freedom Rider deals with the power of, of saying a name and Breonna Taylor. Uh, the story talks about young story writers, which I want you to talk about, Narada, that you met with who have fears of an African-American father not coming home. Fears as a young teenage boy at the age of 12 when this story was written, what do I tell my sister about the reign of racism? So I know for you, Narada, you worked on several stories, but these two boys, little Robert Brown Jr. and Jeremiah, when we met them, they were four foot nothing. Now they're like five foot. And before this book comes out, they're gonna be giants. They're going to be giants, but you work with boys who in middle school knew what it felt like to, to watch George Floyd take his last breath, to, to learn the history of Breonna Taylor and then boldly set at a keyboard and share that story. So as a father, as an African-American man who knows those same sentiments, what was it like to work with these kids? donating their time and their talent to to tell something that was so important it was to me i looked at it it was all super important because of the times that we lived in i mean to see young black minds pay attention and to look at the tv screen and to see people that look like them being um killed and you know um it what it looks like for no reason uh it affects them i remember my own son, uh, him watching Fruitvale Station, and he after afterwards he came to me. He was pale, he was crying, and he didn't know things like that happened. He's like he didn't do anything, and they shot him. And I had to break it down and explain to him. Well, you know, this was the moment where, son, well, you're a black male in this country. This is what happens, unfortunately. So uh, it became a, a lesson. But for for Rob and Jeremiah. Uh, they seen it too. This was their Fruitwell Station moment by watching George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and everybody else that looked like them on the TV screen. That's where they're now having to watch for themselves is like, okay, I'm a black male. This is what it's like for us in this country. And it's sad for somebody to write. They don't know if their dad is coming home when they leave the house. It's a reality. It's not nothing that is is something that they seen on TV or had a nightmare about. It's a real life situation. And that's very true. I wonder if my kids think that every time daddy leaves the house, because it's a possibility, the wrong cop on the wrong day, the wrong pullover, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the wrong time holding a phone, you know, shoot, you can't even be in your own apartment without people thinking it's their apartment and getting killed these days too. It's crazy for, um, from the eyes of the African-American in these times today, because it's all recorded, it's all on tape, it's all video now. So uh, to have these young kids have these situations and have these fears and these concerns in this time, and to put that in this book, you know, it's something that resonates with people all over now so that they can see for those that don't have to worry about that. Here's two young authors telling you exactly what's going on. It's not just, people on TV uh, um, just saying stuff to say stuff. This is real stuff that's going on. And here's two young minds telling you. 
want to I want to do a little special shout out to to Brenda. She worked on several stories, as all of you did. Um, she had this COVID experience, and she worked with a, a young girl who is from New Jersey, Patterson, New Jersey, who wrote the quintessential COVID story for the book. You know, this book was created during COVID and in a pandemic. And so Brenda and, and several of the Freedom Writers and Freedom Writer teachers who, who had COVID personally affect them, you know, the hospitalizations and, and fears and family. Um, Brenda was able to work on that story. Unbeknownst to Brenda, and before today, the teacher, Renee, um, supporting her, her wonderful student, Team Leilani, is what we call it, and a mother, needed to get from Patterson, New Jersey, to Long Beach, California, on Saturday, March 26th, and they created a GoFundMe, like we have created ourselves. This amazing teacher, with the help of the mayor, the superintendent, assembly members, fellow Freedom Writers, fellow Freedom Writer teachers, not only raised enough money for Team Leilani to come to Long Beach, California. She's now paying it forward to other kids who have created their own GoFundMe's to come, who don't, don't have that network. So what does that feel like when you when you see this dynamic teacher, this, this student who's 12 years old and a mother who've already packed their bags? In their mind, they're already here. And you got to help that story come to life. I mean, they're the real heroes, you know, they're, they're the ones going through it. And, you know, as Norada said, these stories are, they're relevant. They, they need to be told it's, it's what's happening. You know, um, these, these young authors and, and, you know, their children and, you know, they, they see things in a different way. We as adults and they experience things um, differently than we as adults, but it's still so, so so tragic and and so beautiful that they're able to write about it and you know they're heroes they're little superheroes to me um i think it's it's beautiful that they're paying it forward i think you know these donations oh my god it it feels amazing it feels it's a beautiful thing what's happening here is a beautiful thing i think we're gonna have to do this before. where were all of you back when i started teach i didn't know i didn't even know if they had gofundme back in the day. I, I told you i was old um when i was like knocking on doors selling bras at doors you, but, but, you but the GoFundMe. <laughs> we are just shy of three thousand dollars that was raised in an hour wow just shy of three thousand dollars wow. do you know how many beanies that is do you know how many kids that is um but we're shy of three thousand dollars so in the last couple minutes, if you're watching, five bucks, five bucks. Don't go to In and Out. Don't go to White Castle. Uh, don't. Where was another burger joint uh, that they could stay away from? Shake Shack. Don't go to Shake Shack. Don't go to McDonald's. Uh, five bucks. Get us that much closer to three thousand dollars. I think we might need to do a couple more of these. So I'm gonna let you know, those of you at home, dear Freedom Rider, it is coming. It is done. It is bound and it is ready for the world. It's beautiful. Um, we, it's beautiful. It is a page turner. It may just be the best thing we've ever done. Um, if you have not pre-ordered the book, do so. Let's try to get this book to be a bestseller on the New York Times bestselling list. We've got a we've got number one authors here that were number one on the New York Times bestselling list. So we want to try to do it yet again. Um, we're going to ask all of you to to, to order the book. For those of you that are in California, come to our official book launch on Tuesday, March 29th. You're going to see all these cute kids signing the book. And there's a generation of our authors who were taught cursive writing. So they don't even know how to do an autograph. It's hysterical. They actually have to print their name. So it's going to be a very long and very slow book line. But I want you guys to just envision all of these delicious little kids, all of them lined up. And we're just going to send a book down the road and we're going to hoot and holler and, and cry. And their big brothers and big sisters are going to have their hearts leap out of their chest. If you want a little bit of that magic, uh, join us on, on March 29th to Tuesday at uh, the official launch of our book at the Hotel Maya in Long Beach. Join us. I think we might need to do a couple more of these because we got 30 days, 30 days oh, yeah. to get these kids here. Um, and there are kids at home right now that are sad because they are economically challenged. There's food insecurity. So I would rather have $25 stay on a table to feed a family uh, than for a beanie or a flight. So we're going to help them. And the we is collective and the we is our. Um, we want to celebrate those who write. We want to celebrate the light. 
We want to celebrate that family is what we have made in this very room. And we want to thank all of you for being part of this journey. Um, please dig deep. Dig deep and, and donate five bucks or more. Um, help us get these kids who deserve a chance to be seen, to be celebrated, to go back to their home countries, to their home states, and be an author. They did it. And we want to give that opportunity to someone else. Oh, my gosh. Something else is coming in. Is it another? Don't. Oh, 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 oh my God. You know what? When I, Freedom Riders, listen to me. I'm very bossy, apparently. And when I tell Freedom Riders to do something, so guess what? Your cutie patootie, uh, Maddie, Freedom Rider extraordinaire, married to this guy. She just donated again. She just donated again. Don't go to Starbucks for a week. She just donated again. We love you, Maddie. That's our Starbucks. We love you, Maddie. Maddie also is a contributor to Dear Freedom Writer. Maddie is also a Freedom Writer in our original book. Thank you all for giving us an hour of your life. Um, please, please help us in this movement. I hope it's a mission. It's part of our mandate. And we'd love to see all of you in support of this incredible Dear Freedom Writer movement for these student authors. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Share this video with your friends. Pick up this book online wherever books are sold. Help this book become a bestseller. And let's celebrate the power of the written word. Sounds good. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, thank you.